Okay, so now that we've got the mountains finished, our next plane to work on is, of course, this region in front of the mountains, right? These foothills. Now, they're still very, very, very far away. So we have to keep that in mind as we do our color selection. And the thing we need to know about what's known as atmospheric perspective is this, that the further things get away from us, the bluer they get, which is one of the reasons why the sky is blue. It's very far away. Uh, the closer that things get to us, the greener and then yellower they get. So yellows we see close up, blues and grays we see far away. Uh, reds we see close up. We do not see reds very, very far away. Okay, so it basically works that way. Um, so knowing that we're not going to have a huge difference between this color that we used for the base of our um, mountains, our mountain back here, this guy in the distance, and the foothills right here. But even before I put those in, I want to go ahead and get my mist working. So it's real easy to do. And, you know, there's no hard and fast deal with the, this mist because we're going to cover it anyway. So I'm going to take the big brush on this and just work very, very efficiently. I've got some white left over from when I was doing the highlights on the mountains. So I'm going to take that white, load it up pretty well on my biggest brush. And down here at the bottoms of the hills, particularly right there, I want to drag that white across, like so, into nothing. So I did that. Okay. If the brush gets polluted, then I need to clean it. But if it's okay, I'm going to keep working with it and bring it over here as well, just like that. That white is going to stay on there for days if I leave it just like it is. It would be it would be wet and able to be worked with for at least a few days. That's one of the advantages of using oils over acrylics is that the acrylics would dry right away and I would have to work with great haste. The risk I have of bringing this white up into here is that I'm gonna catch some of that burnt umber and pollute my beautiful mountains, so I've got to be real, real careful how I do this. It's another reason why using the, uh, the heavy duty brush on this part is, uh, is well advised. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and clean the brush because I have to get some umber on there. I don't have to clean it perfectly, I just need to get that burnt umber off of it. Clean it against the trash can. It's okay if I have a little thinner on there, it doesn't have to be bone dry. Go ahead, get some of that white, just like that. And let's go into our next plane. Now I said I didn't want these to be super, super steep. So I'm gonna bring it right up above this one, like that, and drag it out. Now, I want that to be misted. I'm gonna bring some more white, load my brush, and lay it on very heavily, right there, all the way across. So I did that. And you see how I'm going above my sketched lines. Some more white right above this one. Drag it down just like we've been doing. Bring it down. Cover up that burnt umber. And just drag it across. Like so. So just so you know what the uh, the plan is here, we're gonna have green grass here, lighter green grass here start to get to blue green back here and then basically gray green back here in the far distance and so the way we do that is there's a couple ways actually I'll show you the easiest one I think so I'm gonna leave this brush with the white on it just here to the side for right now okay I'm just gonna put it over here what I want to do is I'm gonna take just a tiny bit This cad yellow. Okay, just like that. So what I'm gonna do 
is on this far mountain color that we had here, I'm going to turn it slightly green. Because yellow and blue make green, but I want it to be a very distant, almost gray green. So let's finally use a touch of the yellow. I don't want it to be too dark. And that is just about perfect right there. And I don't need a whole lot. Okay. That's about good enough. Scrape my knife. Wipe it. Put it to the side. And now the brush that still had the white on it, I'm gonna take that and go straight into the gray green. Brush that right onto the top of my foothill, just like that. And I want it to be darker at the top and lighter toward the bottom, just like with the mountains. Same principle applies. Get it loaded again. A little bit darker at the top here. As you can see, a little bit of that brown is showing through. It doesn't bother me. What I'm most concerned with is making sure that right here it fades into nothing. Okay. And now I'm going to clean that brush really, really well. Sock it in the trash can. clean, dry fan brush from before and start brushing this down to nothing, just like we did with the mountains. Now remember, we put that white here, so this is going to start meeting the white here momentarily. And we'll get a nice misty effect. work it until I get it to where I want it to be, the, uh, the value that I want to have, and that's pretty good. Now, let's say I want to put some trees on there, no problem. So that's the grassy area, right? Go ahead and even that out just a hair. little bit darker than the mountains in the background, but not too much darker. This is far, far away. And I don't want to ruin my mist right here, so which I'm starting to do. So I'm going to clean this brush. I'm going to throw a little bit more white there to simulate mist. Clean my brush. Get some white right on the corner. some mountain color bled over into this foothill here. Not a big deal. So we're going to take this base color and now we're going to darken it a little bit. So watch this. I'm going to take some of this darker color and add it right to it. Just like that. Until I get the desired color that I want. It needs to be darker than that one but this is too blue. This is starting to look like our mountains now. So I'm going to take some more of that cad yellow. I want it to be greener. Mix that in. Okay. I'm just going to stir this with a brush show you how to do it. You can start to see it a little bit. 
greener, a little bit bluer, a little bit darker. Put on the brush. Make sure that my top edge is nice and crisp. And I start here at the top because as I come down, it's going to get into mist. So I want to like drag the paint off the brush as I go. So by the time I get to the bottom of this foothill, hopefully there's not a whole lot of paint left on the brush. But this right there shows you why I didn't want to use the uh, fan brush when I was doing the edges of the mountain. So let me go ahead and get my detail brush to clean that up. I'm not adding any color. I'm just simply going to bring the edge further out like that. And just go ahead and finish. using the very edge of the bristles, just the very edge. And scrubbing it down until we hit the white that I put there already. See that? Just gonna keep on working that blue green. There's still a lot of paint on this brush. Very, very far away, and far away things are misty things, or soft things. We get that effect. Got a lot of thin blending. Give the illusion of feathery colors. Now, I'm going to clean this brush. See how loaded it is? It's still a color. start down here with the white, an unpolluted brush, and start bringing it up. If it gets polluted really quickly, so I gotta keep wiping it on the towel. And just start misting, just like we did that other photo. See that? See how this fades into that, and this fades up into that. Right here, where the dark and the light meet, just want to really, really soft. Just like the brush, because otherwise the green will overpower the white. We'll have any mist left. Bring the white back up. Okay, just clean the brush like that. This anyway, it's not gonna hurt anything. Just keep brushing out that white into the green. It's a nice, soft fill. See how nice that looks. Like our mountains, we don't want to know where one stops and the other starts. Just wipes the brush, the excess green, 
And I want to just sort of clean it up like that. And that's pretty good. We're going to leave that. Okay. Now we're going to get even greener as we go to this edge right here. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and really add some yellow. straight from the cadmium yellow. And I'm gonna add just the slightest touch of blue right to the brush, like that. It's gonna need a lot. I'm starting to get really into the foreground here. And start pulling some of this blue into it as well. Still gonna have a bluish but it's going to be a lot greener as well. Let's see how it's still too blue here, so I need more yellow. So here we go. Start mixing it in. Now if I put that on, that's like radioactive looking. That doesn't look good at all. So I really work that into the blue. Make sure that it's darker than here, so I'm going to take some of this color here, add that in. Now I think we've got a good color. And follow the same procedure right here at the top. Up here, I'm not so worried about the edges because they're straight edges. So with my fan brush, I can do these. As I get closer to down here, I'm gonna go back to that detail brush and not repeat the mistake I made last time. I'll start brushing this color down. Just like that. See, we're getting a real pretty green going here. It's still to the blue, much greener than this hill or that hill. Okay, so let me get my detail brush. Make sure it's good and dry. Pick up some of that color so you get a good sharp edge and bring it down into nothing. But I'm going to bring it further down into nothing because it's getting closer to the viewer, to you and to me. Now I'm hitting the white, so I'm going to clean the brush. Put it on the trash can. Brush on towel and start pulling upwards, just like we've been doing. Here I don't want it to be just straight white. 
That one looks a little weird. We're now getting pretty close to the viewer. So the super, super light green is fine with me. See how I bleed that over? It's not a big deal. Remember how I said we work in the back? Forward. Now I've got that little baby bristle right there. And the safest way to get that off without messing up my paint job is to take my knife. To do it with the bristles, but I already had a hole in there. Maybe I should have done that. So I got that off, and now I've got all these scars there, so let's go ahead and just blend that out, soften it up. No big deal. and soft, rolling hills, it's beautiful green, reminds me of uh, Austria, I was very lucky, I got to go to Austria in 2017, beautiful, beautiful country, both naturally and architecture, just a stunning, stunning place, if you get the opportunity to go, I hope you take it. It's an amazing, amazing country. Got to go to uh, a few little mountain towns. Blessing. Right at the foot of the mountain is just unbelievable. Like something out of a fairy tale. And Neuschwanstein, which is the uh, castle that Walt Disney based the Disney castle off of is there. Not in the Flossen home. I don't remember where it was, but uh, it is in Austria. Okay. So that foothill looks good. That's done. And now we do the one closest to us. So this one needs to be the darkest. So I'm going to finally use sap green just a touch of it it's a good dark color and if you're wondering what is he saving that for you'll see you can add that to the color we just had let's add a little bit more of this dark mountain color and now I'm gonna add just a touch of yellow ochre make it a little bit earthier and greener they get to us, the more we can see the yellows and the greens and the reds. So let's, yeah, that looks good. That's real nice. Just following the same procedure that we've been following. Top edge. All the way down. Salzburg. Fascinating place. It's where they uh, shot some scenes for the sound of music. Which is fine. That was cool, but that's not what I found most fascinating about it. What I found most fascinating were all the churches. Just churches everywhere. And um, over 100 churches in that little town. Because it's not little. It's, it's little for a hundred churches, and the guy told us why that was. It's because um, the rulers wanted to be remembered, and the way they could do it was by dedicating a church building to the church. 
out there that way. Gain some sense of immortality that way. And so they commissioned all these church buildings. And the styles go from late Gothic to the uh, Baroque. Almost Romanesque. Some appealed to my tastes more than others, but they're all gorgeous. So as I finish up this foremost foothill, we're about done. So as you can see, we've got this these hills rolling into the background, right? Now we need to detail them. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to sort of make this look grassy-ish just by using this fan brush and just pushing on the top, just like that, just barely. I'm only going to do it on this one because it's the one right here in our immediate view. And it just adds a little detail and gives the illusion of proximity to us or looking at it. Okay, that's good enough. That's all we need. We want to like give some texture to it. Yeah. We're about to cover a lot of this, so you don't really need to. You can clean the brush. Let's go ahead and add some trees back here. You know, we don't want these hills to be just bare and dull and have no life in them. So I've got this dark green now. I need to lighten it up. And to do that, I'm going to take some of this white. I don't need a lot. And actually, I'm going to pull out just the tiniest bit of this mountain color. Try and use the paint that we've got. So with the green, with the white, and with the mountain base color, start working those all together and see what happens. And what I want is a bluish, greenish, grayish color. It'll give the appearance of very, very far away evergreens. Greener than the hills, but not quite green. It's just a, it's pretty good. So it's almost the same color. Almost the same color. All right, so the way you do this. So here's how we're going to do these trees in the background. I'm going to take just a tiny little bit of thinner on my brush. load up my fan brush like this and you can see that thinner right there see how wet that is okay load my bristles okay now i'm going to come up here and i'm going to place the bristles right there and just very gently pull see i know that's too wet some of that thinner off. A little bit too much. Okay. Shake it off into the uh, trash can. Let's try that again. I did not reload the brush. So I'm going to take it, place it, pull, pull, and pull. See that? Now this part I can let it ruin my day, but we're not going to. We're going to take it, and since it's so wet, I'm going to pull it down. And that way I'm going to take some of that white that was up there already and use it to my advantage. Okay. Clean the 
brush. Not got much white on it. Try it. Go back into the thin, thin, thin gray green. Okay. Not quite loaded on the uh, bristles. I'll make sure it's really on there. And we're going to use the bristles to do the work for us. So I'm going to take it. This will give the appearance of an alpine forest. Reload. And now I can do a few more layers as I go down the foothills. Just reloading the brush. And I don't want them to be in perfect rows. So you can see as I come a little bit closer to the viewer, I'm bringing them down, and I'm pulling straight up each time. Reloading. Push it down, lightly pull. Push it down, lightly pull, straight up. And now it looks like I've got evergreens all over the place. Oh no, I got it onto my foothill. That's okay, watch this. Just a lot of paint on there. That's all I gotta do. Just brush it out. Some more right here except now we need it of course to be darker so we're going to take our knife take some of this dark color add it in we want this to be greener so we're just pulling in some of that green Greener than the hill. So take a little bit of sap green, adding that to it. Take a little bit more of this metal color. That's a lot. Take some cad yellow. Spruce trees are definitely to the blue side. Okay, let's test. It's good. We don't want to pop too much. These are still part of the uh, part of the distance. Okay. Make sure it's good and thin. So I'm gonna add some thinner right to it. Not repeat the same mistake we made last time. I'm wrapping the brush on the side of the uh, trash can. Load, good and loaded, just like that. Place and pull. Place and pull. Place. Get some more bristles. And I want these to be thicker. This is a good thing. See, this thinner will help it go over this white that we had down there before, because remember that white's real thick. See that? Thicker up here. That's better. We want these to be taller than those. They're closer to us. Good. Dab of thinner on there. Just want to make this paint stretch. Push and pull. 
push and pull. I don't want rows of soldiers. So that's why I'm doing them in different rows like you see. In fact, I take this one. Now, see my color's getting a little too light, so I'm gonna take some of this dark blue. Right onto the brush. Watch this. Push and pull. Push and pull. I'm just putting some variety in here. It's both sides of the brush. There we go. are going to be in the mist here, so that's okay. And I'm painting them into the mist. Not a big deal. In fact, that's a good thing. They just need to be getting bigger as they come closer to us. Looks good. Okay. Now we get to these guys. We're going to change tactics just a little bit here. Let me show you something. I think you're going to like this. So I'm going to take some of this black, just a very little bit, and I'm going to add it to that green that we're working with. And I'm going to take some of this cad yellow and mix it with that black. And yellow and black make a beautiful green. So there's two ways we can, uh, first of all, let me put some thinner on this paint. So I'm just dripping it in, just like so, stirring it up. Same thing with the umber. Just gonna make it good and wet, okay? This part I'm not going to do with the fan brush. This one or this one. My personal preference is for the script liner. So let me show you how this works. Gotta use a lot of thinner. Okay. Make sure your brush is good and clean. That the bristles are actually doing what they're supposed to do. show you this from start to finish. So I'm going to get the bristles into the thinner, then I'm going to put that thinner right into the paint, spin the bristles around, just like that. And I want this paint really, really thin. Okay? And then I'm very, very lightly just going to start pulling. Just like that way which is really good for the tops 
back into the thinner, back into the paint, and start pulling up. Thicker at the base, these are evergreens, thinner at the top. Back into the thinner, now into the umber. It's down here at the bottoms. I can do this. Just push the paint on, like so. Working from the bottom up. Just evening this out at the bottom. Thinner paint, spin it around, bring it over. And as it works its way up into this misty area at the top, it naturally will get lighter, which is good because the shadows are going to be at the bottom. Right? Might be a little too light. That's fine. I had a little too much thinner on that. Let's bring this one down. Make it big. Start coming up some area here. A little bit more thinner. Back into the paint. As we get to the top, we want our nice pine edge. Now, script liners can be a little temperamental, so let me show you how to do this with this brush, in case you're more comfortable with that. Still want it nice and thin. I'm going to take the excess, rub it off like that, okay? And just Still want to place it heavy side toward the trunk. Nice and steady. Heavy side of the trunk. And as I go up, just make sure I get nice, clean points at the edge. As you can see, it doesn't do as much detail as the script liner does. So, it has its limitations. But we can make it work. Especially if we want bigger trees. So, I just turned this one into a big one. Not a problem. See that? And for these ones in the distance, I just want the indication of tree shapes. They don't need to be perfect. I'm just sort of like adding some light color back there. I should have done that first, so I'm sorry about that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put these in now. That'll look good. Down here, going down the hillside. Okay. Put the darker ones here in the foreground. This one's going to be a monster. gentler as I go up. And if I want, I can take some of this dark color and put it at the bottom. In fact, that's what I'm going to do. Watch this. I'm going to take this dark color, really thin it out, and that'll be our shadows. Remember, we got the light coming this way, so our shadows are going to be to the left. really starting to get a lot of paint on here, so that's why it's not going on as aggressively. The thicker the paint, the harder it is to make stuff stick to it. I'm just getting the sides here. Okay. So 
Well, those are two ways to make trees. Now, what about a tree right in front of us? What about that? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's go ahead and take that same detail brush and let's throw it into some thin, thin straight burn topper. Just like this. That's my tree. going to be an actual trunk and trees tend to grow together so let's put another one there okay. and just to give a sense of scale and distance let's put one right here and we'll even put one right there okay and we'll put one These are going to be hiding right in front of them. My advice would be at this point to go ahead and scrape out some of this excess paint. Okay. Because otherwise it's going to be really, really hard. Particularly on this white. Scrape it with your knife. Wipe it off. And I'm just scraping out a general triangle shape. get higher up, it goes more and more to the corner of my brush. See that? Make it look a little bit more like a pine tree. Let's get a little bit more color. There we go. That's and I can do this with a script liner too. And I'll show you on the next tree how I do that. Yeah, I'm using the bristles to give the illusion of all these little needles, right? So I don't want to brush this to death. I want this to look like a tree. So I'm going to put a color right on the corner, just to widen this base. Right there, see how light that is? So I've got to darken it up. I didn't scrape well enough right there, so there's a lot of color. Out there at the top is where it starts to look like something out of a botanical garden. Not in a good way. So I'm going to take my script liner, put it in the thinner, put it in the paint, and right up here, I can do all the little details I want. Thinner. This is 
since I didn't plan on this tree being this tall. And we're gonna do some really thick paint. But we're gonna make it work. It's gonna be darker towards the center. So I'm going into this really, really dark color. Thinner, paint, apply. Some trunk, but not a lot of trunk. Thinner, dark, shadow. Let's go to the combined tree. Let's do this one. Thinner, dark. This one's further away. It's going to be smaller. whole thing with the script liner brush. Thinner, dark, pop it on. And you notice I'm not doing the whole tree shape here. The reason why is I'm going to add highlights momentarily. Thinner, shadow, pop it on. What we're doing is we're doing the undersides of the branches first. Thinner, shadow, and on. Let's go ahead and get that top and start working our way back down and meet. Thinner, green, dark green. And I'm going to just lay it in among these shadows. Thinner, dark green, lighter green. Up here, where it's getting hit by the sun a little bit more, we can have this prettier emerald green. And it'll mix with the shadows that I've already put down so it doesn't look quite like the grass, it becomes a different color. This beautiful blue-green that you see here. Thinner, green, highlight. Thinner, green, highlight. Got a drip here. That have. Now thinner, blue, shadow. Brush it off into nothing. Thinner. Let's go ahead and do this one. Now, a little bit of white on this. Let's get further away. So just add some white. And here we go. Don't need to worry so much about the details on this one. Just need to get the color on in a pine tree shape. Thinner. It 
thinner shadow do that and make it stand out. Thinner, shadow, shadow. We got one more down here. Let's just go ahead and up to pull. This is the fat one, but it's far away. We don't want it to be too dark. And then we left this one over here. It's a thinner shadow. Thinner shadow. Shadow. So I'm going to go ahead and get this left side first. Shadow. I need this to be real thin because I'm laying it on top of this paint that's already there. Shadow. And as we get towards the top, I'm going to make the top right there. Thinner. Shadow. Shadow. Thinner, shadow, shadow. Got another few drops here, we'll fix those momentarily. Thinner, green, green, thinner, green, green. Want to kill all that blue? Only a lot of that blue there. It's pretty good, just like that. Thinner shadow, shadow. Good. Now. I'm going to take this fan brush, make sure it's good and dry, whack it, wipe it, and then i got to clean up some of these spots. Okay. Where the thinner fell onto it, just brush it out, get nice and soft, like we've been doing. So right here. You see I'm working from the... Uh, further planes up to the closer ones, because we want these dark now. These shadows are pretty severe, so I'm going to soften them just a little bit, like so, out here on the edges, especially this one, this one's real tough, it's bruising. Now, what I can do, cleaning the brush, still real severe right there. We need other colors, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take that lovely knife. Let's throw that on there. Just want to make some pretty flowers in this, this mountain. Okay, so now I've got white and red, and of course that makes pink. Look at that, isn't that nice? Okay. And my knife, rinsing and wiping. Okay. 
I'm going to take this remainder of cad yellow, touch of ochre, mix those two together. So I get this beautiful gold color. Okay, add some thinner to that. white pushing straight down but when I'm brighter in the front I'm sort of fading as they go towards the back right like little dandelions or something oh, just pretty flowers and then back here really really faint actually they're so faint back there we're going to use the fan brush for that so Second, get that fan brush in there. And now I am just gonna push it on. It's a semi random pattern. Just get the indications of some colors, some patches of wildflowers. See how pretty that is? This far away, those flowers are going to be small. They'll be clumps of color. You're not going to see all the details. Not that far away. So you see how I'm sort of brushing out these clumps where they're too thick? That doesn't look right, and people get frustrated and they go, Why don't my flowers look right? It's because you're not seeing flowers, you're seeing colors that far away but your mind knows that they're flowers and so it tells you hey you're looking at flowers but they're really just these clumps of color you notice I haven't reloaded the brush here in a while I'm just letting it sort of work itself out and look I'm going to use it up here these to be quite so faint. So I'm going to show a little bit more mercy on the top here. So let me get, I am going to reload now. There we go. Illusion of flowers. So just what I'm doing is I'm making bigger clumps with the corner of my fan brush. That's all. Doing the same thing I did over here, but now with a corner. These look like stalks of wildflowers. Still too far away to see like actual individual flowers. Just indications, only indications. But here on the hilltop, I don't want too much of this grass showing, so I'm reloading the brush. Actually, I need to clean the brush. That's what's happening. It got polluted with green. So I've got a nice clean brush, and I watch this. Really make this uh, top sing. Now, the way I can do this is I'm going to take a little bit of white with the yellow. Mix it right on the brush. See that? I have white and yellow. Now watch. And that'll tamp down some of that green. It's wrecking my beautiful flower patch there. And now we've got it working. Okay. Let's have some fun with the red. So we got these uh, really nice reddish no flower in nature that I know of is that red. So let's mix it some brown. Throw 
put some thinner on there. like blood or puke or something. Watch this. Isn't that just something? Gotta use it sparingly. Be very, very sparing. See, See how the white and the red not being mixed into one monotonous color get these different values on each push of the bristles and it just looks beautiful. We're just trying to make sprays of color. Using the bristles, see that? Just the corners. Because otherwise, I'll just get this real brown color. And it just looks. Still got the green in there. See that? We haven't covered that. So I've got white on the bristles, and I've got red on the bristles. Just letting them do their thing it just makes these beautiful, beautiful effects. And let's go ahead and let it just sort of tire itself out over here, far away. And if we get something too vibrant, we'll just brush it out. Two fiber, so we're brushing that out. And we are just about finished. So, of course, the last thing and perhaps the most important thing about your painting is to sign it. When I first started, I would sign my whole name, put the date on it, and uh, in the course of doing a number of paintings, I've come up with a signature that's mine, you know, and works for me. I typically sign on the left. I don't know how it happened, but it did. Um, I'll show you how I do it. So you make sure you have some really thin paint. Something that's visible but not too overbearing. So over here in this left corner, I'll show you how I do this. Not a whole lot is going on. Whereas on the right hand side we have that beautiful spray of flowers and you know we don't want to ruin that. So what I've done. Got some thinner on this br uh, brush. So this is real, real wet. Okay. Almost a mauve brown red color. And all I'm going to do, now well, the paint's going to go quick. So I'm just going to sign my name, or my initials rather, like so. If I need to go back and strengthen it, I can. you do whatever works for you. Um, some people say there's one way to do this. It should be red or yellow or... I don't know that it really matters. There we go. That looks nice. And with that, I'm going to check for anything that... 
touch, the touch, which I do see something. Just go back, clean up a little bit, and then you're finished. Right here. A little too severe for me. I'm going to soften that. Just a little bit down into the uh, mist here. Clean my brushes. I hope you do the same. This painting I will stick onto a surface where it can be dried, or where it can sit and dry, rather, uh, without having things blowing on it or what have you. In your house, you know, if you give it at least a week, it should be pretty good, particularly with all the thinner we put on that. The thinner makes the uh, paint dry quicker, actually. So I'm gonna very carefully take it like so and put it somewhere safe so that it can be allowed to dry. So without further ado, I wish you all the success in the world and uh, hope that you're able to make paintings that you're really, really happy with and really proud of. If you have any questions, by all means, uh, just message me in the bottom of the uh, video description and let me know about something you would like to see covered that I didn't cover in this particular video, and we'll see what we can do. Hope to see you watching more of these videos, and uh, if you like them, please, by all means, subscribe and tell a friend. I really do like teaching these and uh, helping other people to know how, how much fun painting can be. Until next time, good night.